That is Christian Ojakian. I am Brian Ralph here on the Super Media YouTube channel here to break down the Alabama Grand Canyon matchup. Um, we thought we might get a big contrast of styles in this game with Alabama and St. Mary's. Grand Canyon had other ideas, Christian. Uh, we'll start with the Lopes because they are the underdog in this game coming off of that upset win, a 12 seed. What did you take away from, from what Grand Canyon was able to do to St. Mary's that may or may not help them uh, against Alabama? First of all, good to be with you, with you here, Brian. Second of all, I'm pissed because when the bracket came out and I'm looking at the 12 fives, right? Yep. My, my, my gut instinct was I like Grand Canyon against St. Mary's and I'm looking at the numbers and I'm like, okay, let me, let me see why it's like, okay, they're, they're legit defensively like top 10 effective, uh, effective field goal percentage defense. They get to the line top five rate of the country. Right. And you got athletes like Tom Grant Foster jumped off the page as a freshman at Kansas because of his athleticism. Like you put him in the whack, right. Or you put right. him against St. Mary's. Shouldn't that happen again? And I'm, and I'm watching more tape on Grand Canyon. I'm like, they got a couple good guards. They got a stretch four and hit threes. They got war, lock war off the bench. Like they got athletes. Grant Foster is the best player on the floor. And then what I do, I said, you know what? Randy Bennett, they don't lose first round of the tournament. They're going to be so disciplined on the glass. Grand Canyon's going to get owned on the glass. They're just going to do that thing. They're going to win 62 to 50. And then the second that game started and I saw <laughs> Grand Canyon get to the line, they got to the line, right? Grand, Grand yep. Foster playing off two feet in the paint with pump fakes. They're getting some dunks. They're getting straight line drives. And I'm like, this team's for real. They're really yeah. athletic and like, they're not a great shooting team, but they can hit shots mm -hmm. and they defend well together. And they were clearly more athletic. It's like, it's like, what's the ceiling of once when St. Mary's is like, Ooh, discipline, Yay, like defense, right. rebounding, communication. Like, where does that hit that limit when you don't have the horses, right? It's like right. Grand Canyon was totally a team with, where it, it didn't work. And, okay, that was my Grand Canyon rant to start. When you look at Alabama, though, it's a, it's a, different, it's a different type of game. It reminds me of we just saw – Colorado play Boise and then play Florida. And if you watch Colorado play Boise, you're like, Colorado sucks. Like, they don't, they can't score. It's like, yeah, they can. Boise's good at defense and made it a half-court game. Look what right. they did in an open-court game against Florida. So my one my one main concern is, um, is Alabama going to go by three and Grand Canyon going to go by two? Because I think Grand Canyon's going to be able to get to the rim mm -hmm. and, and, and score. And they got the athletes to, to play at a game at pace. And, like, they've got good guards. I just don't know if, if Alabama hits – 15 threes and, and Grand Canyon hit six. Like if Bam is just able to win this game, 98, 89, you know? Yeah. So I, full disclosure, I picked Charleston to beat Alabama and I'm kicking myself for doing so. There were a handful of uh, what I would call undisciplined upset picks that I had in the first round where I picked teams that were lesser that played the same style as the higher seeds, which is a, a huge no, no. And that's like a principle of mine, a principle of many's. And I, I let it slide. I thought, you know, if you're going to play fast with no defense, Bama does that better than anybody else. I don't know why I thought Charleston was, was going to do that. The opportunity is there for Grand Canyon to score points and to get to the lane, as you mentioned. In the last 10 games, Alabama's 215th in the country in defense efficiency. 215th. And that's an improvement from where they had been down the stretch. Like they got they got a boost from beating Charleston and they gave up 96 points to Charleston and got a boost for that. You mentioned Grand Canyon's guard play. I I, I love going through this backcourt personally because it I have not come across a backcourt that is as decorated within a single conference as this is. So two years ago, Javon Blackshear enters the season as the WAC preseason player of the year. He hurts his knee 12 games into the season. Ray Harrison comes in, doesn't come in, but steps in that lead guard role, gets first team selection. I think he was second or third in WAC player of the year voting. So he comes into this season as whack preseason player of the year, he does not win because Ty and Grant Foster wins and Javon Blackshear comes back healthy. So you essentially have like three player of the year caliber guards back there. Oh, and, and here's Colin Moore. Who's as good as any of them uh, plays really good defense as well. He's one of the nation's leaders in steal rate. You got what you get from this front court. You mentioned lock war and the, shot some questionable shots. Um, in the uh, in the St. Mary's game that that kept the door open for the Gales, uh, but but he's a really really good player. Gabe McLaughlin came up with some huge rebounds in that game. Like I think Grand Canyon is going to make Alabama work for this, and I think a lot of what they do plays into some of the things Alabama doesn't do well. There's always a chance that Bama scores 110, and it doesn't matter, particularly when Mark Sears is playing the way that he is. Um, but they're going to test Bama now. 
Bama at their best, Christian, is uh, a team that can beat anybody. Is there anything in this game that gives you pause uh, or makes you think um, that Alabama may be vulnerable? Um, one more quick note. I love, I love your roster breakdown. Like, and Blackshear's still not even himself fully, but he's still like, right. He still got his swagger and his in his court presence, right when he's out there. Um, another note just about this roster: Sidney Curry transferred from Louisville, and he's a big dude. And I just remember his career high. He had. 28 at Wake. We beat him by like 20 my senior year at Wake and he went off. And I'm like, they can't even get anything out of this guy. Like that just shows like, like what the roster is. They don't even need him, but then he's just a bench guy. But yeah, okay. With Bama, right? Like we just assume this game's going to be, I wonder what the total is at. I assume it's at least like in the high 170s. Like it's just, I don't know. I it's it's, it's going to be high. It's going to be very high. If it's not high, it's going to be bet up to be that high. Here's something interesting, though. So, like, I understand Bama metrically is so bad defensively, right? And and it's yep. it's one of those things where why can't – and I understand Nate Oates lost a lot of his assistants this year or last year. Mm-hmm. But like, can't we bring in anyone? Like, it's, you can't just tell me it's just because Mark <laughs> Sears is small. Like, like, why are they so bad at defense? It's like you've got – You've got athletic freaks at seven feet, uh, like a yep. Nick Pringle who should be able to protect the rim. You've got like a Grant Nelson who should be a defensive Swiss Army knife, right? And then Estrada yep. and like Ryan Griffiths. Like, why is it so bad defensively? Like, it can't. It's not just because of the pace, because it's adjusted, right? So, it, it bothers me why they're so bad defensively. I like they do have like better athletes than St. Mary's, which like could you know you're still jumping up to a high, right? St. Mary's we consider you know in that high major category, you're still playing right. better players than you've been playing. So it's like on a, on a one V one basis, like it might be a little bit more difficult just to like, uh, that sounds stupid. Okay. That that's not true. St. Mary's is good defensively. It doesn't matter who they're, who they're playing. I guess. I don't know. I, if grand Canyon's not hitting threes and, and Bama, Bama can score against any, right. And, and we've seen them like against, they played Purdue earlier this year. And like, they were in control of that game for a while of it. Like the ceiling is so high with them, but also grand Canyon could just, get a bunch of layups and dunks early on in this game, hit a couple threes. And all of a sudden Bama is just like, they can't get back to the game unless they get stops and they right. can't do it. So right. I'm not comfortable taking Bama to win at all. Well, let's, let's get into our official predictions. Those are brought to you by my bookie. There are sports book of choice here at the series media YouTube channel that are taking us all the way through the NSA tournament, the perfect place to bet the NSA tournament. And they have a huge selection of straight bets, props and odd boosts. However you want to play my bookie makes it easy to do so. And we help you do it. You sign up. We have a generous welcome offer. Just use promo code SLEEPERS. And you get a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Again, just use promo code SLEEPERS. When you sign up, there's a box. You put a promo code. Put, put in SLEEPERS. Hit submit. $1,000 first deposit bonus uh, for, for signing up with my bookie. So Christian, I'll, I'll concede to you first. So we've kind of gone back and forth. A lot of different ways this game could play out. Who do you think wins? I was good. I had made up my mind that in the greater in the contrast of styles that you led this video with of Bama St. Mary's that I was going to talk myself into Bama. I was going to take Bama, but another one last note I brought I brought up that stat about about how much Grand Canyon gets to the line, like top five in the country, and they were able to do that against a disciplined St. Mary's defense. And discipline is one of the last words I'd use to describe this Alabama defense. They they hack uh, you know, bottom fifty. They yeah. send people to a top fifty rate in the country, right? And and yeah. Nate Oates is fine with that because he's got so many bigs to throw out there. It's like, he doesn't matter if you're in foul trouble, right? That's like against Purdue. I'm pretty sure every single one of them fouled out. So if you, if you got a grand Canyon team, that's confident that has a freaking grant foster, multiple guards who were voted free season player of the year, like a stretch four who can step out and shoot it. Like um, a guy like lock it's like they, they've got guys who are talented as talented, athletic, if not more talented and athletic than Alabama's players. Like, it's never comfy going against a team that can go for 100 and, and, and hit 15, 23s in a game. But, man, if Grand Canyon's getting – like, Grand Canyon's going to score. And and they can yeah. play a game in the open floor. And, and they're a better defensive team. They're a better rebounding team. I think the Lopes can pull this off. And if, if I'm catching, like, five and a half points, I'm, I'm probably going to have to play that. I think so, too. I, I honestly feel relatively confident in Grand Canyon money line. And I think you're going to get some good value play there. We mentioned their defense. They Their strategy is to run you off the three-point line and play really good interior defense, which they've done. And it's much easier said to be said to do uh, against whack teams than Alabama. 
Like it doesn't, the fact that they are top 60 in the country and like opponent three point rate, I'm not going to worry about because Bama's going to get the threes up no matter what. Right. But the fact they're top 10 in interior defense, this Grand Canyon team, I think means something because if Alabama goes cold and Alabama shot like 58% from three, I don't know if that's going to continue. If they go a little bit cold and you need to get some easy baskets inside, Grand Canyon is going to make that difficult. Wait, Charles, one, 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 that? wait, sorry. Finish, finish, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that was the first game Bama shot well from three in like a month. Like right. they, they've been putting up a ton of points because right. of their pace and because they get to the Ram, blah, blah, blah. But like they had, that's the first yeah. game they shot the ball well in a while. Yeah, it can continue because of the, the quality of shooters they have, but I'm not going to expect them to shoot over 50% again. They're going to have to go inside at some point, and I do think Grand Canyon probably has the advantage there, at least when Grand Canyon is on defense. There's you know, also this – go sorry, ahead. I'm sorry. I keep thinking you're done. It's okay. <laughs> Last thing that I'm done. If, imagine if Chance McMillan was still on Grand Canyon for this game. Yep. yep. But here, here's the thing, too, is so when, when Bama ha- has struggled – recently there's always been some point where their offense goes to a bit of a lull and they can't stop the other team they allow runs we saw kentucky do this we saw florida do this we saw auburn do this we've seen everybody alabama has played except for charleston and charleston did it late but it didn't necessarily matter and bama probably took his foot off the gas the other team has gone on a huge run against bama where they just can't get a stop and it's flipped close games or a bama lead to a big deficit for alabama and they can't make it up right Grand Canyon has a good enough defense to allow that run to happen because there are holes in Bama's defense that are there to be had. And Grand Canyon, as we've talked about, has the roster and the size to take advantage of that while also getting the stops they need. Again, St. Mary's, they ripped off a 17-1 run that blew a a close game open to a 17-point lead for Grand Canyon. And obviously St. Mary's and Bama are two different different beasts, but that spurt ability, to, to use Clark Kellogg's word, is a huge, huge deal in March, particularly when it seems like you're going to have the fan support that Grand Canyon is going to. They kept making comments in the broadcast about how it felt like a a Grand Canyon home game there with with the way their students were were there. Um, I feel pretty confident that Grand Canyon can win this game. Hell yeah, man. Go Lopes. Go Lopes. Of course, um, we'll probably be back to break down an Alabama win when it's over because that, that's how it goes. But no, we're both predicting your Grand Canyon upset. No matter how it goes, we'll be back to break it all down at Colonel Supers Media YouTube channel. So make sure you like and subscribe.